It's creating a hundred billion dollar government powerhouse. No one has that, you know, end to end. Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part D, Medicaid and exchanges. Now they have scale, as the CEO says, they're in 50 states. I think the street has been, and you know, partly I have been too, a little disappointed on the timing because I think WellCare could have gone for a higher price. They were trading at 330 about six months ago, and they've sold now at 305. I don't think there's really any fundamental issue. Well, they had a reception with both the CEOs, you know, WellCare and Santine last night, and we dug into it a bit. Uh, so I don't think there's really any issue. I just think that they wanted to do it now, that price was right. It's going to spark a whole new round of consolidation. You know, who's left standing? Maybe big five big companies probably you've got, at the end of it. You've, you've had you know, some of your picks and some of your favorites are similar over the years. They haven't changed a lot. They've never been based on uh, merger and ac acquisition. True. Have they never have? Are they now? Or, or you just figure that might come along if the fundamentals are attractive with or without consolidation? Yeah, I don't usually pick on, on event. I pick it on fundamentals. Of course, consolidation offers optionality to the uh, upside. I'm bullish on the government space. I think Humana has uh, the likelihood of being taken out. It'll probably take two years because Cigna still needs to, to delever from uh, the Express Scripts transaction. I think Molina is probably going to get take out soon. You know, maybe United is, uh, is, a, is a buyer, maybe Centene. I don't think they've maxed out on their debt capacity that much yet with, with WellCare. And then finally, Magellan as well, you know. But broadly speaking, I've just been a bull on managed care. I think it's a real buying opportunity. The weakness is not sparked by fundamentals at all. I would be buyer of United. You're getting it at 15 times right now, next year's earnings, uh, you know, realistically. And I'd be a buyer of Anthem um, as well. Uh, so, you know, all of those, I think, are, are really my top picks When the here. administration gets behind um, the lawsuit, like we heard mm -hmm. earlier this week, yeah. does, does that change the dynamic of whether it's successful in, in higher courts or, or, or do we have the same, it doesn't change it at all? Because it certainly caused a ruckus and just politically. Yeah, so I think the fifth federal court of appeals, it's going to go to them um, in the third quarter. And it's very possible that they agree with the Texas decision. I would think next year when it ends up in the Supreme Court, um, you know, they're going to uphold the law. It would be very surprising to me that just because the DOJ says we should throw this whole thing out, that we would so they'll reverse the un, the, yeah. they'll reverse the lower courts because he's still got Roberts there. He I don't I don't know whether his earlier decision was based on on the law or based on yeah. his perception of whether the Supreme Court should reverse something that, that Congress passed. I don't know what I don't think he's ideologically. Driven. I, th I do think he's ideological. Not, not, so you don't think it would be reversed? What if it were, though? Yeah, I don't know that they would at least reverse Medicaid expansion. I would be shocked if they did that. And, you know, and that's relevant to this deal and to other names as well. Um, I would be surprised if they took the subsidies out on exchanges. I think the big ideological divide seems to be around the pre-existing conditions and whether, you know, they actually keep that provision in place. I'm sure that's, you know, it's a political football at this point ahead of the election. I'm not sure it's serving the Republicans well, but we'll see.